Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's Quanser user webinar. Today, we invited Dr. Leonid Friedman from the National Autonomous University of Mexico to talk about the sliding mode control. My name is Zuzana Fabusheva, and together with my colleague, Hernando Pineros, we will be your hosts and webinar moderators today. Thank you, Susana. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you all for joining uh, from different parts of the world. We hope all of you are doing well and staying safe and healthy. It is now my great pleasure and privilege to introduce our guest presenter, Dr. Leonel Friedman. Dr. Friedman received a PhD degree in applied mathematics from the Institute of Control Science, Moscow, Russia in 1988 and a doctoral science degree in control science from Moscow State University of Mac Mac Mathematics and Electronics in 1998. From, from 1976 to 1999, uh, he was with the Department of uh, Mathematics at Samara State Architecture and Civil Engineering University. From 2002 to, to, from 2000 to 2002, he was at the Chihuahua Institute of Technology in Mexico. In 2002, he joined the Department of Control Engineering and Robotics at UNAM, the National Autonomous University of Mexico. His research interests include variable structure systems. He has co-authored and co-edited 11 books and 17 special issues devoted to sliding mode control. In 2014, 2018, he served as a chair of technical committee on variable structure and sliding mode control of IEEE Control Systems Society. He received a Scopus Prize for the best cited Mexican scientist in mathematics and engineering, and the best UNAM researcher in exact science. Professor Friedman served as an associate editor in different leading journals of control theory and applied mathematics, and has worked at more than 20 universities and research laboratories around the world. He is also an international chef, uh, chair of INRA France and a high level foreign expert of the Ministry of Education of China. Dr. Freeman, thanks very much. Now we are passing the microphone to you. Hello, everybody. I will speak today about the stage of development of the science I've devoted at least last 30 years of my life. And it is a precisely sliding mode controllers. So, First of all, I would like to give you some intuitive example. What is it? Is you, if you can imagine a mechanical system, and if you would like to control the velocity of mechanical system with some simple story, which is dry, which is dry friction, and dry friction here is modeled by simple sine function, you will, you, you will intuitively understand that you, if you have break, good break, you will stop. So, and it doesn't matter in some sense how much load do you have in the car if, you, if your brakes are strong. So, you can imagine here is alpha is a, your uncertainty, your uncertain why, because you don't know precisely how much load do you have in the car. If you are, your brakes are strong, you will stop. So, but it is very funny story, why? Because if it doesn't matter and after finite time you will stop, so what does it mean? Your velocity will be zero, so, Sigma of sine of the sigma of zero will have a value of the mass of the weight of your of the load in your car. So that that's the key point here. Why? Because dry friction is a, like a dragon. It has a lot of values, a lot of heads. So what is it? How it works? It is very good to understand the story. So, what does it, why it is good? Because, you know, for control engineer, it is very important to have a control law which works 
under uncertainty. So, and it is a precisely an, an illustration how it works. It works because the sign of zero, it's not a single value function. It is multi-value. So that is why two questions are arising here. First, how to deal with the equation with, with discontinued right hand side? So, and second, a new kind of convergence arise. Why? Because intuitively it's clear you will stop in the finite time. But can you make such a convergence with a standard viscous friction? No, because in viscous friction you will decrease, your velocity will decrease exponentially, but it will never go to zero. So two important stories appeared here. One story is that we should understand how to work with this continuous equation. From the other point, it is clear that it is new kind of convergence, but that's mathematical story. Engineering story is also much more important. Why? Because it, it can be seen here that if you have uncertainty, you can manage it and you can manage it in finite time. So you know you can estimate when, when you will converge. What you can do, what would you like to have more? So that is why I've mentioned here just two main directions which was moved these, these signs in end of 50s. First, Theory of mathematical questions. Theory of differential equations with the discontinuous right hand side was needed. And what how to deal with such equations and how to understand it from engineering viewpoint. The other poor story was for engineers. Okay, we can stop just the velocity, but the point is as usual, okay. We can stop, but we should be sure that we will stop before step, not after. So we should control not only the velocity, but position too. That's the point. So, and the question was how manipulate both position and velocity at the same time. So, but if you will see this simulation, I've put it in the right corner, what you will see? You will see that if we will start simulate, we will converge to zero, we will stop. But when you when we will see the control signal, you will see that it works like a policeman who are working with a prisoner. So if he can, if the prisoner try to go left, he received a right kick. If he will go to try, if he will he will try to go right he'll receive left kick and each step he will be beaten. So what does it mean? This means that you will have high frequency control signal and he will very strongly violate the system. So if, we will, if you will try to explain it from the viewpoint of control theory, you will see the story. The story is that in this case, the activators should work with very, very high frequency. So, and if you will transduce it on the way, on the policeman story, you will tell, okay, the policemen have, they don't have too high salary to work such a strong way. So, and the worst case, if they will, if they will kick strongly the prisoners, they will kill him. So if we will tell you this in, from the viewpoint control theory, we will rephrase it in control theory like that. Okay, if the actuators are unable to work on high frequency, they will be blamed. Or in the worst case, they will destroy the plant. So this is a key problem of such kinds of controller. And that's what happens and that was and that is a 
main story in sliding mode control. How to keep the main properties like a robustness, more than robustness, in sensitivity for the perturbations, but arrange the working condition for actuators and plant in the good, uh, to save actuators and plants, let's say like that. Okay, so, but first it was necessary to, to solve a math question. And math question was solved by Professor Filipov. He reported a solution in the first IFAC Congress, which held in Moscow in, 2000, in 1960. So precisely 60 years ago. And he told a very simple story. Of course, it was not simple from mass viewpoint because he told that the right hand side should be an inclusion which formed with a convex closure of the right hand side in the vicinity of discontinuity surface without the neighborhood of the measure zero. But it was very, very good, but not for engineers because engineers of 60s, they, are, they was not speaking in such, such a language. But the idea behind was very simple. If you'd like to, be, to follow the surface, you need to be at any moment in the tangential surface of the surface, or subspace of the surface, and you see what happens here. If you are, would like to follow the surface, you have one vector go up and the other vector going down, going down. So what you need, you need to make a convex hole connecting these two vectors and then choose a vector which belongs to some, to again, uh, uh, some subspace. What does it mean? This is a very simple story. If you would like to be, if you'd like to be, to keep the family, make it compromise, try to be smooth. So try to follow the tangential surface. Otherwise, you will destroy the story. The, sto the, the same idea was behind of the little solution. But nevertheless, to deal with convex holes, it was not the story by engineer, for engineers. And that is why it was necessary something more. And what have been, the, there are two persons which are my, in some sense, my mentors. First is my direct mentor, Professor Rutkin. You can see him at, uh, 50, 56 years ago here. And his mentor was Professor Yemelyanov. He is, unfortunately, he died last year, but Professor Rutkin is in good health, I hope, and he's working in Ohio State University now. And what they've offered, they've made two breaking ideas. First of all, they've told, okay, I wouldn't, we wouldn't like to speak about comics hall. We are control engineers. For control engineers, what is very important? The only thing which is important is that if I if I have a a system with control system, I should know what is a real value of control. So to fly. So they've offered the concept called equivalent control concept. This concept is very simple. They told, okay, I would like to follow the surface. What I'll do, I should find a derivative of the surface and try and I should ask the control that this derivative is zero. So what does it mean? This means that in that if I will use such control, I will follow the surface. And that was precisely a revolution in the sense that we don't need now convex holes anymore. We just need to solve algebraic equation. You see, the equation for S dot here is no more than algebraic equation with respect to U. 
So that is why what they've done, they've just expressed this algebraic variable and they substituted into initial system. And, they, and they've obtained the equation of sliding. So without need to use of convex scope. But the second idea was much more important for control engineering because they've told how to solve a problem of stopping of both X1 and X2 variables. What you need to do? Very simple story. You need not to switch on the surface when the velocity is there. You need to organize sliding surface. And that was the second important concept, which was introduced by the school of Professor Humilianov. They told, okay, let us find the surface allows us to des desired motion and which will be invariant with respect of perturbation. You can see here an example of mechanical system for which the dynamics is F function and function f is bounded by one. So what will happen? You, if you will have such a story, you will see that if I will put a control like this, this control, if we will, if we will sub, uh, substitute in style, instead of sigma x2 plus cx1, we will follow this surface starting from some point. And then following the surface, this surface, we will not depend on perturbation. So this means that sliding mode control have here, has here a role of policeman because he will work against of perturbations. But When we reach a sliding surface, the sliding surface will be invariant with respect to perturbation. And so, choosing C, we can simply have desired decreasing of the motion. And finally, the X1 and X2 will go zero asymptotically. So, these two main concepts make opened the door to make, to make connection between any part of control theory because if you you can do here in the surface whatever you want you can make each infinity the way uh, optimality you can place the edge and velocity whatever so you and you can make finally the bridge between sliding mode control, ensuring you insensitivity with respect to perturbation, and standard control theory of reduced order. Because you see, the design here is also separated, split it in two parts. One is design of the surface, and the other one is design of sliding mode control. So, Speaking about mechanical system, what we do have? We do have um, that even we have uncertain perturbation, x1, x2 position velocity will go to zero, but they will go asymptotically to zero. But in, in contrast, you will re reach the surface you've chosen in finite time. And it is, even in the case you have uncertainty or unmodeled imperfections and external perturbations. That's a very important story. So, and it was a, a big discover in 60s and people started to work on that. And as usual, if you'd like, uh, in the, uh, if you will receive a new medicine, you will you will see you you will trust that it works against of any disease, and it doesn't have secondary effect. 
but it is not true. Why? Because the next question is, what is the set of uncertainties we can fight against? And the, que the question was solved by Dr. Brahma Dragenovic. You see, she is still either like such a beautiful woman. And she's telling that, okay, don't be, don't have overshot. You cannot tell that you will, are, you are able to fight against any perturbations. You are able to compensate only perturbations which belongs to the span of B vector. So this means that if you are able to reach the perturbations with your input matrix, it is okay. But if you don't, you cannot, you can, you can um, compensate just a part of these perturbations. So that is why the system for which sliding mode controllers are able to ensure invariance can be and should be written like that. So you can put then no uncertainty, but this uncertainty should be inside of the space which generated by input matrix. So, and at the next stage, Professor Lukyanov, he made a general scheme, a general algorithm, how to deal with the design of sliding mode controllers. And what happens? He told, okay, what we need to design a sliding mode control. We need to split the space in two parts. One is matched variable X1 here, and one, the second part is an, uh, 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 sorry, matched variable Rx2 here and unmatched variable Rx1 here. So, and then you can make, should do the following. First of all, you should change X2 as a virtual control. So, and this fictitious virtual control is working on the system without perturbations. You can do whatever you want from classical control theory because you are invariant here. And then you should organize a sliding surface like a matched variable X2 plus virtual control it should be zero, and then to call to policemans and ensure which are able ensuring you the motion of this surface. Finally, what you will have, you will converge in finite time to this surface, and then what happens? And after finite time, you will have desired motion because you've done it like you want here with your fictitious virtual control. And so finally, you will reach uh, what you want for X1 and you will have the same for X2. That's the story. So here you see how it works. So here we have mechanical system, here are perturbation F, U is a control, this is a sliding surface. So, in the, so you will start in some initial condition, you will reach the surface and you will slide. So what will happen with the variable of, with the state variable? They will go to the surface. You hear, you can see here the switch for X2, and then you will start to slide. So, and here in the, this graph, which you see for control signal, you will have the secondary effect. You will see clearly secondary effect here is so-called chattering effect. That's what I've mentioned. You, your control signal will switch with infinite frequency. And you see this blue is precisely 
the signal you are switching and the, in the red you see the perturbation so this means very important story that if you're so the control signal is majorating the perturbations and this means that the, you're in the term safe tool you the policemans will be every time stronger than their prisoners so and that is why they will ensure that you will have invariance starting from the moment you've started to slide so that's so the other story a little bit later starting from 76 was developed inside of united states by the school of professor george george Leitman. he is still american professor in uh, berkeley being 1995 and his phd students professor um, charles goodman he is emeritus professor in uh, Technion in Israel, Raymond de Carlo and uh, Martin Corles, they are emeritus in Purdue University, and Ross Barmish from University of Wisconsin. So, what they've done, and it is uh, the main participant that was, uh, there are much more people there, but the main idea is that such controllers like sliding mode controllers or really controllers are not unique to make a sliding mode what they've told that they offer so-called unit control what does it mean unit control unit control means that you have a control like that it is in vector case so in scalar case it's precisely sine function but in in vector case it's a controller which has a one norm that is why it's called unit but if you will see here what happens if you will see uh, the laplanar function like v uh, normal uh, square laplanar function you will see that v dot is here uh, depends on the model of S. So what does it mean? This means that V dot will be less than some constant of square root of V. And if you will integrate such inequality, you will see that it, it gives you finite M convergence. So, and it will give you also a robustness and more than robustness in sensitivity if you will choose the gain of controller more than norm of a certain. So, and they've solved a lot of problems of uncertainties in optimal control problems using such unit control. And uh, if you will see, for example, a classical book of Khalil, Professor Khalil called the, the idea they offered Lapon of redesign. What was the idea? The idea was that they did not, the, the idea based is based on the Laponov function. You, you can have four nominal systems. And then the idea is to keep the system, even there are some uncertainties. So you should based on Laponov function. And having a Laponov function, like a, a solution here for simplest case, is a solution of. Laponov equation. So, and having such a Laponov function, you can deal without a special control uh, sliding surface design because you can take these expression like a new sliding surface and you will have sliding motions. So, all of this story was good, but you should take into account that this controller for scalar case is sign function but for discontinuous case it doesn't have a discontinuity on axis but in an axis but anyway it has a discontinuity in the origin so all of the story is good but the point is that 
Anyway, you have this continuity, and you have this continuity, you automatically have infinite frequency requirement. So, and it could destroy or plant or treaties. So that is why the main idea was the following: how to substitute the discontinuous sliding mode control with continuous ones and keep finite time convergence and robustness. That's what the time we've started our PhDs with my friend and co-author Professor Levant. Of course, this story was a lot of years after. It is in pyramids in Mexico. But what they were, he and Professor Levant was PhD student of Professor Emilianov. And what he offered, he offered so-called second order sliding mode control. Because we've both from different sides have understood that the main reason of chattering is because a real relative degree of the system is more than one. And the point is that the actuators added some additional degree of um, uh, degrees to the real relative degree of the plant. That is why what you need, you need to do the following. Maybe you will ensure the sliding not only on surface, but also on its derivative. And that is why the first algorithm reason you see here is precisely the second order system, the same. And what happens that Professor Levant, in his PhD, he proposed not just one sign function, but combination of two sign function, which has so-called Zeno effect. Zeno effect means that uh, you have, for example, Achilles, which is running very fast, and small turtle. And if small turtle will be in a much far enough from you, from, from Achilles, Achilles will never go forward with respect to the turtle because when Achilles re is re reached the point the turtle was in the first moment, turtle will make a small step. So, and in the second stage, turtle will also make a small step and you can continue the number of steps till infinity. So, and the conclusion of Zeno was that uh, uh, very, very fast Achilles will never reach the turtle, but it is not true. And so, and it was a step to uh, achieve a geometrical sequence which converges in finite time. This, the same story is here. This algorithm ensures that the phase curve will make an infinite number of switches, but it, can, it will converge in finite time. What will happen? that we will converge not only for x1, but also for x2 in finite time. So you see the difference in the same simulation, and you see that what happens here. You don't need any surface. You will be invariant, and you will converge. You can see here for x1 and x2, you will converge in finite time without need of any surface, but you still have a chatter. And you see that because we have a, a and B constant, so and B should be more than A and more than A should be more than perturbation. So the force you need to make a, such a sliding mode is even bigger. But so what was the main idea? The main idea was to substitute this continuous control with continuous one. And here, if you have twisting controller, this algorithm called twisting, you can do the following. You can put U as an integral of twisting. So your controller will be Lipschitz continuous, not only continuous. And you will be able, considering the 
relative degree one system to with such a controller to ensure robustness and insensitivity, even insensitivity with respect to the F uncertainty. And you will converse to sigma equal to zero in finite time. But of course, the condition of F will be different because before it was necessary to ask the gods that F are bounded. Now it's not the case because F dot will be should be also bounded. Why? Because if you have Lipschitz control, of course, you are able to compensate only Lipschitz perturbations. And if they will be not Lipschitz, if they will be, for example, discontinuous, you cannot do nothing with Lipschitz control. This is a restriction. So, and even the 87, we've celebrated 50 years of my mentor, Professor Rutkin, and he told, okay, guys, it looks sympathetic, but believe me that if you need a sigma door to realize your controller and you have the system like that, and you, you can simply express the perturbation as the difference between sigma dot and the control you know. So why you need in that case sliding mode control? And the counter argument we've put it was the following. It is okay, that's true, but if G control gain is uncertain, so it is not enough to compensate perturbation because even we know sigma dot and we don't know precisely G, so we don't know perturbation. So that is why this strategy does have sense because it doesn't require infinite gain because this controller is Lipschitz. So, of course, you see uh, that it is good, but we've understood two stories. Story number one. Maybe we need to make a, some more deeper the decomp decomposition of the system. Maybe we don't. We need to have the order of controllers more than one. And second, maybe we will try to make a, such a control like a twisting, but without need of usage of derivative. And that's what happens. And we've obtained so-called super twisting controller. Super twisting controller is a controller showing second order sliding mode, but without need of usage derivatives. Is the, even the first controller were were from the earth. This, this one is from the devil, in my in my opinion. And you see what how it works. First of all, it consists of two terms. It looks like a, if you want a nonlinear PI. It has a first term, which is in some sense depends on position only. It is like P term, but not linear. And of course it has square root here and square root means that you have here infinite gain. So you can wait for finite time convergence. But the second story is that it has also integral term. It is like I term, but see what happens here. It is so-called discontinuous integral term. Why? Because it's not integral from position, from x. It is an integral from sine of x. And it turns that it converges also in finite time, but without usage of derivative. So that is why it is very important achievement, because here you can substitute the discontinuous control with continuous one and you see, I will show you two movies with the experiment of Kwanza on the equipment made by, made by Kwanza. Here, as you can see, 
we are trying to realize first order sliding mode. And here you, you can hear the chattering. So even to avoid that, uh, the problem, I put it my hand to fix the system. You see? I will tell him the secret. My students made experiments and finally it was just four minutes long because the, the motor here was destroyed in four minutes and it is not a problem of chief quanser. It is a problem of sliding mode control. Then we've changed the sliding surface to optimal one. And you see here, it requires even more chattering. But see the head. The head is the right good solder in right square, in, in the right square in Moscow. So it is it keeps a position very, very exact, precise. So, but don't forget that it is just for four minutes. After that, the system will be destroyed. Here, the same experiment with algorithm of super twisting. So students are students. They locked the door in the evening and then when I came, they opened the lab and the system was work, kept working, kept working. So this means that, uh, so sliding mode control based on super twisting algorithm, transform the control algorithm to working one even with the quantum equipment we have. So that's precisely how it works. And that's the main different difference for some equipment you can reach because the, let's say, I should tell you that second order sliding mode are not even any higher order sliding mode and any sliding mode controller can be not chattering free. The point is uh, the level, how deep you would like, you can, you are able to uh, adjust the chattering. As more order of sliding mode controller, you will, you will choose better chattering adjustment you have, but you should take care. It is not, it is happens only when the actuators are fast enough. And you see here the simulation result on the same system. You, we will, we will take, we, we took the same system, the same sliding surface. We reached the sliding surface, but we have the same kind of symptotic convergence. And then what happens? The chattering is not disappeared, but it is small enough. So, and that was a, a three stages I've spoken about now. First was the first order sliding mode control, then second order sliding mode control, and then continue sliding mode control like a super twisting. So, then of course we've reached, the next stage was to deal with the uh, sliding mode controllers of order more than two. So, and then well, it, that's what we've done. And it was uh, the first paper was published in the early of this century, 2001. And you see here an example of algorithm. It works like that. So, first you need, if, for example, for the third order, you need first to reach some surface for which you can reach finite time convergence to some parabola and then following to this parabola, you can reach precisely zero. That's how it works. And you can see here the illustration. The same story was done for a arbitrary order. Here is a force order controller. And of course, you can make a, any order controller, but controller of order five, 
It is practically all the slides, that is why I haven't wrote it. But it is simple, it could be simply adjusted and it is simply, and there are gains for them which you can use. But you, as you can see, the controllers require differentiators. And that is why such controllers were accompanied by the set of differentiators, with, which also made by same, same idea and they converges theoretically exactly in infinite time. Moreover, they made the best possible accuracy in the presence of uh, perturbations and in the, in, the, in, the, in the presence of noise and the presence of discretization step. So, finally, what was done for higher order sliding mode controllers? They was in this stage still discontinuous, you see, this sign function ensures a robustness and moreover insensitivity with respect to the bounded perturbations. And what happens now is the following. What we need to control the black box? The answer is we cannot do nothing with the black box. But if they have some knowledge of the system, what we can do and what knowledges we do need, which knowledges we do need in order to make a control and be happy in, to, in the sense that we can first don't know the precisely, we cannot know the model and we should have a finite time convergence. So, the knowledge we need is just a relative degree and the upper bound of the perturbations of R derivative. If the relative degree is R, so what we can, we can do? We can take the output, then put it inside of differentiator we have, and it will converge in theoretically exactly in finite time then send it to controller which also converts theoretically exactly in finite time so that, so what we will have we will have theoretically exact finite and convergence to sigma and its derivative till r minus r minus one so what does it mean this means that we will collapse the dynamics of the system of relative degree r so What's the conclusion? The conclusion that is that with such, such kind of controller, we can be happy being alive. Well, what I mean happy? Happy that we don't know practically the model. The only two things we need is a relative degree and the upper bound of uncertainty. So if we know that, so we are ensuring that we will be happy being alive. So some kind of, in, in some, it is kind of our new religion. The re classical religion of sliding of uh, control is that, okay, if you will be, uh, if you will have a good behavior, you will not have uh, big errors in the life. So when you will, uh, when you will die, you will go to the paradise. We are telling opposite. We are telling, okay, you can be flexible. Just you have, you should tell us the bound of your flexibility, and then we will ensure you that you will be happy, being alive, not after you will die, being alive. So why? Because you will have theoretically exact finite and convergence. It was good, but it was not enough because final controller was still discontinuous. And that's the difference. And that's what we are done, what we are doing now on the uh, in, in this moment. The sliding mode, a lot of people from sliding mode community, they are concentrating of making continuous arbitrary order sliding mode controllers. And this is, for example, my colleague from Yunnan, Professor Jaime Moreno. This is Indian team I'm dealing with, also French team I'm working with in Lille, 
also China's team I'm dealing with in the University of um, Nanjing, so-called Southeastern University, and a lot of places we are starting to do that. So what we are doing? This is an example of the controller. It's called discontinuous integral controller. So how it works? It is no more than PID controller, but non-linear one. It looks like a super twisting of 42. You can see here a term which is P term, but of course non-linear. This means that it is cubic root of x1 of position. So here is a velocity term, and here is a not uh, square root multiplied by sine of velocity. And this is sigma function from position. So it is non-linear PID, and it allows three things. Why? Because this controller is continuous. This is one problem. Another one, you will converge not to the second, to the third or a slide in the control. So this means that not only x1 and x2 will converge to zero, but also you will converge to f infinite. This is another version of this controller called continuous twisting. So, and it, it is the same, but the uh, Compensation term consists of the two con discontinu discontinuous controllers, discontinuous part which looks like twisting, that is why it's continuous twisting. So this is how it works. You see, you can see here, you can you x1 and x2 converge to zero, and uh, x3 and the uh, uh, perturbation and the control converge to perturbation. The perturbations in finite time. You can see it here. Compensate control signal and perturbations. You see, control compensate exactly the perturbations. So finally, we will you can see in this table in comparison between the stages I've mentioned. At the first stage for the sliding mode controller, what we will need? We will need sigma and sigma dot. So we have this continuous controller. We have asymptotic convergence, and with respect to the step of simulation, you have first order convergence. If you have second order sliding mode, you need this discontinuous one, you need discontinuous controller, you will have finite time convergence, it is good, and you will have second order precision with respect to the sampling step. But the controller is still continuous, it's discontinuous. So we've made a step back because what is important for us is to have continuous controller. So we've made super twisting. We've used the same information. We have square precision, but the convergence was asymptote. And as usual, you would like to be married with the rich and beautiful. So this controller super twisting is rich because it's continuous, but it doesn't have good convergence because it is asymptotic one. So the second order sliding mode control is uh, beautiful because it has finite and convergence. So what you will need, you will need this continuous controller in that. So what we would like to get, we would like to be married with beautiful and uh, uh, rich, so we would like to have continuous controller and finite. We can do do two strategies: one to use third order sliding mode discontinuous control, but for that we need a second derivative, and it makes us a lot of noise. So that is why finally we've reached continuous second order sliding mode controller means that we've used the same information as initial, but we have a third order precision and we we have continuous controller and finite time convergence. Of course, we've made uh, such controllers for um, a third order system and for arbitrary order system. And you can see here in the, those presentation 
the, re, the uh, book with the textbook. It's not a book. It is a textbook we wrote. But this textbook, even it is new enough, it is published just six years ago, but it doesn't cover the fifth stage of development of sliding mode controllers. And uh, so that is why I put it as a reference, the new paper. This is a concept and here are the recent result. They are published normally in transactions or in Automatica. And you can see them in order to choose the controllers you want. So, and finally, I would like to show you a couple of movies with the same controllers I've mentioned, but giving the better effect. Here, you can see the robustness test with them Continuous sliding mode controller with variable gains. And here you can see the movie showing that I'm not generous because my student asked me to buy, to buy the couple of tequila to make the the bottle of tequila to make a experiment successfully and i didn't done it you see what the experiment is they've put it on 25 gram pendulums half of kilo of white and it is still robust so I recognize that for such experiments, I should be more generous. So, thank you, thank you. I think that I I should give some time to the questions, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Friedman, for a very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, I will pass the microphone to Hernando, who will uh, moderate the Q&A session. And we have a couple of questions from the audience, so let's get to them. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Freeman. Wonderful presentation. Yes, we have a few questions here. So uh, let me start with one of them that it, uh, is as follows. So, Dr. Freeman, will it be right then to say that uh, a smooth control law is a trade-off between tracking performance and parameter uncertainty? The point is that sliding mode control is uh, uh, mostly against of perturbations which are not decreasing together with the states. If the perturbations are decreasing as the states, you can only really use also sliding mode control. But if if uh, if you have just the perturbation decreasing in the states, you together with the states, you can use uh, whatever you want, L2 or let's say H infinity or backstepping. But the point is that there are time dependent perturbations. If the perturbations are from from outside. So you cannot do nothing with the, with this perturbation with other type of control. But uh, if as smooth is your controller, you should tell that your perturbations should be also smooth if you would like to have exact convergence. I mean C norm. If you are using integral norms, so it's other story. The main property of sliding mode controllers is that they are working in C norms. What does it mean? This means that you have a exact convergence, theory, I mean theoretically exact, of course, and uh, you can, uh, but in this case, you should tell that a smoother controller I can, I should uh, have, a uh, smoother perturbation I can uh, compensate. That's all. 
Thank you. I think we have time only for one question more. So, hi, Professor Friedman. Uh, please tell us about the present uh, slight remote control challenges and future directions for uh, research. Thank you. So, I can tell. It is the future direction of research first. We, as usual, you know, uh, we have, we have, um, uh, let's say, discovered a new medicine like a generation of sliding mode controller means that it is a continuous sliding mode controller and smooth sliding mode and Lipschitz sliding mode controllers. But as usual, if it is a medicine is new, it's have it, anyway, it has some secondary effects and limits to be performed. So the next stage is to understand how beautiful they are, as usual. It is future research. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody, for the question you have sent. Thank you, Dr. Friedman, for a great presentation. Thanks, uh, everyone, uh, for joining us today. And I'm looking forward to seeing you online next time.